Hi everyone, my name is Maddie. Welcome back to my channel and welcome to my November wrap up. November was an okay reading month for me. I started pretty strong, I ended pretty strong. I just had this bit in the middle where I read a couple of books which really slowed me down and actually one I DNF'd which I'll be talking about later in this video. So overall it was a pretty good reading month but it was slightly frustrating to have lost probably almost a couple of weeks in the middle that were just being slowed down by a couple of books I didn't enjoy and I either didn't feel like I could put down or didn't want to put down and want to try and persevere with. So a bit frustrating, but I got through a decent amount, so I don't really mind. So just like every month, we are gonna start out with statistics about what I read and starting as always with the total number of books I read this month, which is seven plus one DNF. I don't count that towards my total of books read. I do sometimes, but I'm not feeling like I want to this year. So I am calling it seven books, not eight. And that brings my total for the year so far to 103 books. So I am past my sort of revised goal of 100. I'm not pushing it up any further. At this point, I am just very much enjoying every time I add a book to Goodreads, it telling me I'm 103 or 104% complete. It's very satisfying. Also, I have no idea how much I'm reading in December, so changing my goal is probably just setting myself up for failure. So we're just going to call my goal completed. The total number of pages I read this month was 2,863, which works out to 95 pages per day, which is a little bit less than what I try to aim for, which is 100 a day, but not too bad. But you may also notice that that number does not equate to the total number of pages of the seven books I read, because I did have a DNF and another book, which I've read a significant portion of and I'm still reading. So the numbers don't quite add up, but I'm doing it on how many pages I actually read in the month. But of the seven books I read, the total number of pages was actually 2,453, which works out as an average of 350 pages per book, which makes perfect sense for the length of books I was reading this month. In terms of intended audience this month, I read four books which were written for adults, two which were for young adults, and then one new adult book, which I'm calling new adult. It's technically published as YA, but due to much debate online, I, no one agrees that it's a YA book. So I'm calling it new adult because it just feels too wrong to call it YA. And then for genre, I read three fantasy books, two contemporary books, which were both romances and two sci-fi books, one of which I'm not really sure counts as sci-fi, but I didn't know where else to put it. So that's where it's going. And then for star ratings this month, I just had one five star book, four four star books and two three star books. So not too bad at all. Pretty average for me, maybe a little bit up, but not too many really high rated books. So getting into the books that I read this month, as always, I'm going to go through them in the order that I read them throughout the month, as for me, I just find it the easiest. So we are going to get started. So the first book I finished in November was Cemetery Boys by Aidan Thomas. This was actually the October book club pick for the Facing Case book club. I was just a little bit behind and so finished it in the first few days of November instead of before the end of October, ready for the live show which we had, which was, I don't know, at the end of the first week of November. And if you do want to watch that live show, we did have a special guest, which was Audrey from Perpetual Pages. The live show is still up and you can go back and watch it, which I would highly recommend because it's very interesting. And you can definitely get more of my thoughts and everyone else's thoughts and some really interesting perspectives by watching that. So if you want to hear more about this book, that would be the place I recommend checking it out. And also we of course keep it spoiler free for the first section. So you are safe to watch it, even if you've not read the book. But I gave this book a 4.5 stars, I think. I debated giving it a five, but I think just due to how I read it, I read this in really, really small sections because it was a really busy week and I was really, really tired. So I only read like 10 pages at a time, which really took me out the story, which is completely my own fault, no fault of the book at all but it did hinder my enjoyment of the book as is often the way I didn't feel fully engrossed, I didn't feel fully invested and that's no one's fault, but it did make it probably just about drop down from a five star to me. But nonetheless, this is an absolutely gorgeous book. So this story follows Yadriel, who is a trans Latin ex teenager and he comes from a family of brujex and he is trying to prove himself a brujo and so does a sort of ritual, a ceremony to get his sort of powers, his magic and kind of accidentally ends up summoning a ghost, which is the school's bad boy. And it's this gorgeous story of found family and acceptance and people learning to deal with their children being trans and just, it's all handled so beautifully and intertwined with all the Latinx culture and all the characters are phenomenally written. The plot is really, really interesting. Though I will say the plot probably wasn't my favorite part of this book at all. It was absolutely the characters and their development and their interactions 
were just phenomenal. Yadriel was an amazing character. Maritza was so funny and I love her. And then Julian, who is the ghost, is probably one of my favorite characters I've ever read in my life. I love him so, so much. I just, I want to wrap that kid in bubble wrap and protect him. I love him so much. I love them all. It's so well done. There is a reason this book is getting all the hype it is. It deserves every single bit of it. And I'm so glad that this is getting all the hype that it does. So I would highly recommend you check this one out. It is probably one of my favorite books of the year, even though not quite a five star, because although it wasn't necessarily top tier of my favorite most enjoyed books ever it definitely sort of resonated and it's such an important book and will be important for so many people and that is such a phenomenal thing so i am thrilled to have read this i am thrilled that so many people are reading this and yeah i could not recommend it more the next book i read was before the coffee gets cold by toshikazu kawaguchi and this was a little bit of a disappointment for me this was a book which i thought was going to be a really solid five star read for me probably a new favorite and I ended up giving this 3.5. It was very good, it was very interesting, but for whatever reason it just didn't do it for me. A lot of people spoke about how emotional this book made them and how much it impacted them, and I just did not find that at all. I feel like, especially because of the way this book is structured, which if you think it's a spoiler, then maybe skip like the next 20 seconds, but I promise this is not actually spoiling the plot. But the way that this book is structured is that it's basically four short stories following the same setting and the same central group of characters, but the focus of each story shifts quite significantly. And with it being such a short book anyway, when you're only really getting 50 pages with each small story, I really felt like I didn't get the time to fully invest in the stories and the characters, and that is something I find with short stories in general, and if I had known about that structural point of this book, I probably would not have gone into it with as high hopes as I did, but that was probably one of the main things that I struggled with in this book, and I think even more so than that, due to the nature of the types of stories being told, I felt like especially by the third and fourth one, I was fully predicting what was going to happen, I kind of, I picked up the structure of the stories by then, and then knew what was going to happen for the last two, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. The last one especially I feel like was probably the most impactful even though I'd seen it coming and had noticed lots of the hints towards it throughout the book. I did enjoy it the most of the four but it just, for whatever reason, this did not fully resonate with me which was really disappointing. I really thought this was going to be a new favourite. I would also say that the writing for this didn't do much for me. It wasn't badly written at all but the writing was just completely plain. There was no pretty language, there wasn't anything special and that could be the translation, it could be original text, I do not know. I have not read it in the original Japanese but nonetheless I kind of just expected a little bit more from the writing especially with the nature and sort of almost the metaphor of the story being told. I would have liked slightly more lyrical or poetic writing instead of very much a point by point narration of the story instead of any sort of enjoyment of the language itself. So that made me not enjoy it as much. It was a very good book, most people love this book, so definitely want to check out if you're interested. I haven't given the premise yet. The premise of this book is that there is this cafe and when you go to this cafe you can sit down at a specific table and get a cup of coffee and this means that you can time travel to a specific time of your choosing and you can spend a certain amount of time there but you have to make sure that you come back before the cup of coffee gets cold. And that's very interesting and I love that premise and I do think it was handled in a very interesting way, especially the extensive list of limits that go along with this time travel. It's not just a free for all, there are so many rules which makes it far more believable and made it very interesting. But nonetheless, it just didn't hit me in the way I would have liked it to and didn't grab me in the way I would have liked, which was very disappointing but it was still interesting and I am probably still going to try and read the sequel to this as I am still intrigued to kind of know where it's gonna go. The third book I read in the month was An Absolutely Remarkable Thing by Hank Green. This was actually a reread for me. I had read this whenever it came out, maybe 2018. I am not sure, let's check. Yes, this first came out in 2018 and that is when I first read it and I really wanted to reread it so I can continue with the sequel, which I have not done yet, but I will do soon. And I really, really enjoyed this. I gave this four stars. I enjoyed this far more than I did the first time, but honestly, this is the kind of book which is going to be my kind of thing. As a quick premise, this follows a woman who discovers a statue in the middle of New York and decides to take a video with it and names it Carl. And then it is discovered that these statues have appeared all over the world instantaneously. And the video of her happens to go viral. And she very much becomes the center of this whole strange phenomenon. And she is doing interviews and becomes very famous online. And there's so much going on from that, as well as very much a sci-fi first contact with aliens aspect. And although I really, really love the whole social media fame and assessing how someone can act really poorly because of this and is just struggling with so much. And I love that she's a completely flawed main character. She's also bisexual, which is always a plus. 
but my favourite thing was definitely the first contact with aliens bit. I don't always love first contact, but without saying too much, there are puzzles. There are lots and lots of puzzles and they're not for the reader to figure out, but I love puzzles. And so hearing the logic behind them and seeing other people figure them out, love it. Absolutely love it. I love logic puzzles. I've done an online escape room recently, which is this kind of thing. And oh my God, I was in my element. I love things like that so much. So I enjoy reading about it. But I will say I especially did enjoy this because April is such a flawed main character. She acts so poorly in so many ways throughout this book, but it's addressed. She's aware that she's acting badly. This is being written from like a further perspective as far as I can tell. And she is well aware that what she did was wrong and is trying to rectify it, but also can admit that it happened. She's not trying to hide from it. She's not trying to forget that it happened. She is acknowledging it and therefore trying to make things better. And I just love that. And I like when you read, not necessarily even an evil protagonist, just a human protagonist. People mess up, people make mistakes, and sometimes they're really, really awful. And I really enjoyed seeing that. It was just a really interesting take when, especially in a lot of YA books, you very much get the hero trope of the main character who is, you know, perfect and does everything amazingly. So I really, really enjoyed having slightly different feel to this one and I'm very intrigued to continue with the sequel. I will also say, just because I find it quite interesting, I have watched both Hank and John Green on YouTube and all sorts for years and years, so I tend to know sort of their speaking style quite well. And this, if I read this not knowing it has anything to do with Hank Green, I would not have a clue. I don't know how he does it, but it sounds so convincing like someone else. And I know that shouldn't be a big deal. I'm sure a lot of authors do that. It's just because I'm familiar with Hank Green and his sort of way he speaks and the way he explains things and goes about things. This feels both like absolutely something he would come up with, with the level of detail in the puzzles and things. But also I feel like unlike a lot of other celebrities who do books, he has done very well at separating it and making it its own thing and nothing to do with him, which I really do enjoy. But obviously a huge amount will still be from his influence, especially to do with social media fame, as I'm pretty sure that's something that he is quite experienced with. The next book I read is actually the one that I DNF'd, but I do want to quickly talk about it. I don't always talk about books I DNF, especially if I've not DNF'd them permanently, which I'm hoping I haven't for this one. It hurts me too much to even contemplate that I might have put this down permanently. I'm still kind of considering giving it another go. But that book is Blaze Wrath Games by Amparo Ortiz, which I was thinking would be one of my favourite books of the year. It is a How to Train Your Dragon-esque book with Latinx characters and loads of queer characters. This was literally set up to be a perfect book for me and I just could not get into it for my life. I read to about page 170 of 350, so I did get almost halfway through, not quite, but very nearly. And I just wasn't getting into it. I just couldn't connect to it. I couldn't enjoy reading it. And I did kind of think if I just sit down for one day, I can read the last 100 and what, 70, 80 pages and be done with it. And then I can put it down and move on to something else. And I couldn't make myself do it. I said I would do that for three days in a row. And I read like 10 pages each day. I just was not feeling it at all. And I think the biggest reason for that more than anything was the pacing. I do not understand the pacing of this book. The first 60 pages especially were so insanely quick. The number of things that happened in those first 60 pages was honestly just ridiculous. It was event after event after event and big reveal and big suspicion and big government thing. Thing after thing after thing, it was endless. And this main character was going through so much emotional turmoil because of all of these things but there was no time to sit with it. There was no time to process it. There wasn't any time to breathe. And so I kept having to put it down every 10 pages just to even think about everything that had just happened. And I just could not get my head around it and I couldn't get through it. And it was very frustrating because I thought I would love this book. And I am determined to finish it if I can. I would love to pick this back up before too long has passed so I don't have to reread the beginning and I can just carry on. But I just, I don't know if it's going to be the book for me. And it's so sad because I thought this would be one of my favourite books because it is set up to be one of my favourite books. It's got all the things that I like, but I just don't know. And I will also say again, not on the pacing, the second set of 60 pages suddenly got quite slow. And I just feel like also they're playing this big game to do with dragons. It's almost like a sport. And I don't understand it. They have tried so hard to explain it. And I can understand the rules of the game, kind of, but like the team structure. I swear there are six, maybe seven members of this team who we speak to regularly. And I swear those are the only ones we've been introduced to. And then all of a sudden it was the 13 member team. And I'm like, am I missing characters? Have I just completely like put two people into one? Or have I just missed it? I don't know. Something about this book didn't gel with me. Maybe I'll try and finish it. I don't know, but for now it is sadly a DNF. 
The next book I read was Written in the Stars by Alexandria Belfleur. This is a female female romance, adult romance with a Pride and Prejudice retelling and I did give this 3.5 stars I think. I debated giving it a 4 but I will explain in a minute why I downed it to a 3.5. This was a really sweet book. This was, I saw someone talk about it on Twitter and I'd been really bored with Blaze Wrath games so I just picked this up instead and I'm very glad I did. It did get me reading again. It was a longer read than I anticipated. I thought it was going to be a bit quicker than it was but it was really good fun. It follows these two girls who are complete opposites to each other. One is very sort of not career focused because they both are but lives in a very corporate world and that's where she works and everything is done by the book how it should be. And the other girl is into astrology and a bit more of a free spirit and does things her way and succeeds in that way, both of which are very valid. So therefore they kind of come to blows when they meet. They are not naturally compatible even though they both know that there is a very strong spark there and by a series of events it ends in a fake dating situation after an awful first date and it's really really sweet. It's a really good fun book. Um, I feel like it handled a lot of things really well. I really enjoyed reading it. My big gripe was the ending and so I am going to not spoil the book. I mean you can't really spoil a romance book because they're going to end up together but I guess kind of structurally maybe slightly spoil the ending so skip to this timestamp if you don't want to know anything about the ending of the book. Though I'm not actually sure how much of a spoiler it is because as I said this is a Pride and Prejudice retelling. The two main characters are called Elle as in Elizabeth and Darcy. I am thick and did not pick up on this. I just completely missed it. I don't know how but I heard about it after it's a Pride and Prejudice retelling and I was actually complaining to my mum about the ending because the ending is unbelievably abrupt. Like you have this big fight and there's all this drama and all this emotional turmoil and then it's okay we're back together done just done they just move straight on and that's the end of the book and I was astonished I thought there'd be at least I don't know a few pages of them happy or an epilogue or something but as I said I was telling my mum about this and she let me know that the end of Pride and Prejudice is extremely abrupt and it's a known thing that people discuss and complain about is that it ends really abruptly and it shouldn't so I'm guessing it was an homage to that but I didn't like it. So I actually knocked it down from a four star to a 3.5 because of that. It just, it ruined the flow of the book for me and it was frustrating. So yeah, it was a good fun read though. I would recommend it if you want like a fun Christmas because it's very much set around Christmas time, female, female romance. It's a really good book. And there's also a sequel coming out slash companion novel following Darcy's brother. And I could not be more excited. I loved him. So I'm so hyped for that. And then the next book I read was another adult fantasy and that was Wrapped Up in You by Talia Hibbert. This is a short sort of novella, Christmassy romance novella she wrote for Kobo, I think. I had never used Kobo before, but I discovered you can get the Kobo app on other devices and read it there, which was very exciting. As I'm a big fan of Talia Hibbert's work, I have read two of her books, the Brown Sisters books that are out so far and love them. So when I found out she was writing a Christmassy novella there was no way I wasn't going to read it. Not a chance. I had to. So I read that. I read that in a day. It was a really short like 127 page read. I gave it four stars. It was really really good fun and I actually really enjoyed it. The tone was a little bit different to other romance books I've read because the two main characters are people who have known each other for most of their lives. They're childhood friends and they've been friends the whole way through to their adulthood and one of them has got married and since divorced and the other sort of been a movie star and been really busy. And what I really loved about that aspect of it and the fact they already knew each other is you don't get the meet cute, you don't get the butterflies and the maybe we like each other. Instead it really just dove right in because the main guy said that he had a crush on the girl and wants to do something about it now and she just doesn't believe him because they're childhood friends. And so they have to have all these really serious conversations about how it will impact their family and how it will impact their friendship and whether it's a thing they're both up for and both in the right place for. And so instead of just like a cute thing and then having the serious conversation right at the end, you had these serious conversations cropping up all the way through. And the main female lead, I can't remember her name, was dealing with all sorts of trauma from a past abusive relationship and all sorts of things. And it was genuinely fascinating. I really enjoyed it. If you need more things to sell you on this book, um, the main guy is a himbo and there's lots of cats. So that should now get you wanting to read it. But it was really good fun. I really enjoyed it. And also with it being a novella, you don't get the whole third act giant breakup thing, which I understand is a like solid part of romance and that's fine. But I don't like it. I like seeing people happy. So I enjoyed that that wasn't part of it because it's just not long enough to do that. So yeah, overall really enjoyed it, really good fun read, would highly recommend it, especially if you feel like you need a bit of a Christmassy fun romance read right now. The next book I read after that was A Court of Mist and Fury by Sarah J Maas. 
I finally read it. I enjoyed it, which was not what I thought I'd be saying. I gave this four stars, which everyone is surprised by, considering the number of times I've said how much I did not enjoy Akatar. I really liked this. This was good. It took a bit of time for me to get into it. I read the first hundred or so pages of this, maybe slightly less last month maybe and then put it down because I just wasn't enjoying it and everyone kept saying get to page 100 get to page 150 it gets better and after reading some fun romance and then I will probably hope to talk about soon a very boring sci-fi book I started which is not boring just a lot of effort I thought to make fun and quick would be kind of perfect so I was like uh, I'll pick it back up I'll give it another go I read about 20 more pages from where I'd stopped and it got interesting and I was like oh okay I agree with people now I'm liking this and I got more and more into it as the book went on and I did end up really enjoying it though I will say I'm not that sold on the plot the plot's okay it's vaguely interesting I find myself skimming over it all I care about in this is the characters and the characters are done wonderfully I love the character development Reese and Feyre their relationship and the way they develop is phenomenal I love more. I love Cassian. I love Azriel. I love everyone in this book other than Tamlin, who we despise. But anyway, that's a whole different thing. Um, I can't believe I'm finally aligning with Book Twister on my preferences for this book. I did not see this coming. But anyway, it's, it's really interesting watching all of those characters, but the plot just doesn't do it for me. So I'm nervous for A Quarter Wings and Ruin, which is the third book, because I'm just not sure it's going to be for me if we get really plot heavy and like a big war and stuff, because that part of this book is not doing it for me. I feel like I'm barely following who all the bad guys are, just I, it's just not doing it. So we will see. But yes, I enjoyed this. Everyone always talks about Sarah Jo Mass's really like unique writing style. I don't know if it's because I've only read two of her books and I've just not picked up on it yet, but I'm not noticing that at all. To me, it feels relatively generic. I mean, it's nice. And the way she writes dialogue's cool. Like I perfectly well like the writing style. It's just not sticking out to me as anything particularly unique. So if anyone can let me know what is supposedly unique about her writing style, I'd really appreciate it because I'm kind of intrigued to know what I'm not picking up on. But yeah, a four star read, which is not what we expected. I enjoyed it. I had a good time. I read it very quickly. It was fun. Yay. And I will say to anyone out there like me who did not like Akatar, if you have any chance of enjoying the series, do just try Akamath. It is worth it. It does get a lot better. People are telling the truth and I'll write. And then on to the final book I read this month, and that is my favourite book of the month, my only five star, Georgia Sogan Bone by Lainey Taylor. Is anyone surprised that I gave this book a five star rating? No, of course not. Lainey Taylor is my favourite author. I've read this series before and I gave all three books five stars. This is not a surprise to anyone. I read this as part of Do Sabalong, which is a read-along I am hosting of the Daughter of Smoke and Bone series by Lainey Taylor. The first live show is this coming Saturday at 8pm on my channel if you want to watch it. Please do. I'm being joined by some amazing people. I'm being joined by Spoops from Spoopy Hole, India from What India Read, Ro from Rome Reads, and Katie from Brightness Katie Reads, who are all amazing. Some of them read lots of fantasy, some of them don't read fantasy at all. So it's going to be an interesting discussion as to who did and didn't like this book. Hopefully they all like it as I'm making them read it. But yes, I love this book so much. It's so good. I was astonished actually at how well this book held up for me. I wasn't sure it would having read Strange the Dreamer since it, which is like much more lyrical writing, which is normally my thing. I wasn't sure how well this would hold up, but I still loved it. It's not nearly as lyrical. There's lots of very beautiful phrases, as you can probably tell from the inordinate number of tabs I've put in this book. But more than anything for me, this was the characters. Oh my gosh, I love them. Karu is so amazing and strong and powerful and knows what she wants and will go get it and I love her. Susanna is hilarious and takes absolutely no shit from anybody and especially not from Karu who has managed to perfect the way of talking her way out of anything and getting whatever she wants and getting away with everything from anyone and just very used to it. No, Susanna's not letting that happen and it's brilliant and their friendship is adorable and I love the way it develops throughout the book as they learn to trust each other more and things progress. Akiva has my whole heart and soul. I turned into a 15 year old on reading this because he is just the typical broody male who I quite enjoyed reading about, I will admit. So it's good fun. If you want a synopsis of this book, this follows Karu, who is a girl who seems to have sort of a magical air about her and she's living in Prague. And she has this strange connection, has to run this very strange job for this very, very strange man, or we may even call him a beast. And then all of a sudden one day, the portals that she uses to get to this man 
are gone. They have been destroyed, she can't access him, and a whole load of things happen from there. And one of my favourite things structurally about this book is you learn everything along with Karu. I can't actually remember if it's in first person or not. This book isn't in first person, but it is very much from Karu's point of view. This is in no way an omniscient narrator. This is Karu's story being told. And so she knows nothing, you know nothing. I know everything because I've read it before. So it was very interesting reading it with the hindsight and knowing everything. And then coming back to the beginning and kind of seeing everything revealed to her. I still love this book. I still stand by it. I am so, so excited to continue with the series and to do the live show and discuss this book with people and make more people read it. So I'm very glad I did get to read this book this month. So yeah, this is one of my favourite books. It was five stars. Shock. But that is it. Those are the books that I read. I am overall pretty happy with the reading I got done this month. I feel like my momentum is coming back more and more. It is just being impacted greatly by how busy I am, but that's okay. I can deal with that. But I got through a lot of books and a lot of books that I've been meaning to read for a very long time. So that feels like I've accomplished quite a lot. And overall, I'm just very happy. But that is it for the video. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up and comment down below how your reading went. Have you read any of these books? I would love to know your opinions on them if you have, especially if you disagree with my opinion. Subscribe if you'd like to see more content from me. All of my other social medias, as well as information about the read-alongs and book clubs that I do host is linked down in the description below if you want to take part in any of those. But that is it for this video. So bye, and I'll see you in the next one.